Welcome back, everybody. Today we're going to do a analysis of Walgreens Boots Alliance, uh, ticker WBA. Now, the thing about this company is that in the past five years, they are down 65%, and they are at a, a low of $19 today. Uh, maybe this presents a buying opportunity, especially when we look at the all-time chart. They're now trading at the lowest price they've traded at since 1998. So yeah, crazy, crazy that they're trading this low, but maybe it is justified. We are going to be taking a look at the numbers and providing a, a, an opinion on this stock. So we've got a $16.5 billion market cap on this company. Uh, definitely not a small company, and they do pay a dividend even though they have negative earnings. Uh, they must be taking on debt in order to do that. So taking a look at their financials, they had revenue growth actually, and they even had 5% revenue growth last year, which is actually kind of impressive. I, I thought it would decline after the COVID stuff, but they, they grew 8% out of COVID, but uh, it actually didn't really, uh, COVID didn't really affect their business too much, to be honest. And yeah, I don't, this is a very slow growth business in terms of revenue. Now, taking a look at their their gross margin, their gross margin has actually been declining, uh, and their operating income has been declining as well. So th their their margins are getting squeezed is what's the problem with this company. And last year they actually had an impairment, which brought their net income negative. And if we're looking on the quarterly basis, right here, the last two quarters, or no, the last quarter at least, they actually had negative operating income, which is absolutely awful to see. You do not want to see negative operating income ever. Uh, they really have to increase their prices if they if they want to get that positive. Uh, the good thing is at least they had six percent revenue growth, so uh, one positive at least. But they really they really have to get back to profitability. And if they can't do that, then this is an awful company. But uh, if they can get back to profitability, then this is a buying opportunity. So taking a look at the balance sheet, they have a lot of debt. So <laughs> this is another big problem with this company is they have a lot of debt, $34 billion in debt. And the market cap is only $16.5 billion. So they have twice as much debt as their entire market cap, which is actually kind of impressive, to be honest. Now, taking a look at their cash flow, they pay uh, quite a bit in dividends, 413 million last quarter in dividends. And on an annual basis, it's pretty consistent, although I know that they did just slash their dividend in half. So probably next quarter, you'll see this going to 200 million about. And uh, they don't buy back any stock or anything. They don't really do much with their debt either. They're just mostly servicing their debt at this point. I mean, they uh, they did pay pay off some of their debt last year, and yeah, so that that's the big thing is their debt. Uh, I I did pull some of their investor slides, so we're gonna take a look at this, see if they've got any plan to get to profitability. Let's go to okay, we're going to just go through these one by one. Uh, this is for fiscal year of 2023, so last year their retail pharmacy business in the u.s was their biggest loser and they actually made money after international business and then they lost money from u.s healthcare, which is kind of uh i'm not quite sure exactly what that is um i thought maybe it was like insurance or something i'm not really sure and then yeah so <laughs> their total loss last year was like 6.8 billion in operating loss so pretty bad to see that and uh Going here, what did I what did I want to point out here? So this is their sales, sales, sales. What exactly was I going to point out here? Their gross profit. Oh yeah, their operating loss. And here we've got okay. This is their number of locations. They have 8,600 locations in the U.S., a lot, a lot of locations, and 
They've got some in Puerto Rico. They're international business. They have 4,000 international. And uh, they have U.S. healthcare. So this is that U.S. healthcare segment. They have 520 locations. They have a lot of locations, especially for only being a $16 billion company. Oh, also, I wanted to point out that approximately 5 to 5 and 4% of these U.S. retail pharmacy and international segments are owned, and the rest are leased. So they don't own much of it. They're, they're leasing most of the, the properties. Now we're looking at their operating cash flow. Once again, loss. And they're saying that they're expecting second half improvement from lower payments related to legal matters and CapEx and stuff like that. They are their guidance is for three dollars and twenty cents to three dollars and thirty five cents for earnings per share. Uh, I don't think they're going to hit that, but uh, that's what they're guiding for. So it's possible, I guess, um, because looking back at their their last two quarters, they had negative six or negative seven dollars in earnings per share. So in order to hit two to three dollars per share for the full year for the next two quarters they're going to have to hit like positive seven dollars a share and that's not going to happen but but yeah so that's what they're guiding for obviously it's not going to happen but uh yeah I, I don't know how they can get away with that but uh well maybe it's just because it's adjusted not quite sure exactly what the adjustment means but uh i'm sure that's probably why they can say that now Getting into the, yeah, because in the analyst estimates, the analyst estimates put $3.24 for earnings, but that's not going to happen for sure. For the, for the analysts, that's, that's way off. And then the, the revenue estimate at $145 billion, probably going to hit that. And for the next year, $150 billion. So it's still growing in revenue, which is impressive. And a 4% growth is what they're expecting. Oh, also, the insiders are actually buying. So the CEO bought 10,000 shares at $24 a share. And well, some of them are selling, some of them are buying, I guess. Um, but yeah, they're not buying tons of shares. So this is a $150,000 transaction. They bought this one. He bought $242,000 worth. This one, he bought $100,000 worth. And this one bought $100,000 worth. So the insiders are buying more than they're selling, at least, which is good to see. Uh, maybe they're they're probably expecting a turnaround in their business, so that that's good. Now going to the discounted cash flow model, this is going to be interesting. So I put the EPS estimate. This is not going to be accurate, but I put put it in there anyway. And revenue estimate, buybacks, net debt, right there. Discount rate of 10% because I want the 10% return on all my stocks and an exit multiple of 10. I feel like that's very um, fair for this business being that it is in such a competitive industry. Definitely possible we could go for an exit multiple of 15, but since they're losing money at this point, I feel like 10, we have to be like very conservative with our exit multiple. And uh, assuming 0% growth, then the fair share price is $32. But if you account for the debt, which is super, super high, uh, then it's negative six dollars, <laughs> so definitely not a buy at that point. But uh, usually debt's not as like um, concerning as you would think. So probably the fair share price is somewhere in between here, and that's for you guys to decide. Um, this is kind of like a risky stock just because of how much debt it has, and since they're not making money at this point, uh, it's definitely possible that this company just continues to slide downhill and possibly into bankruptcy at some point. Um, but they do have a lot of locations that I don't see them going away anytime soon. So that's one positive, at least. Um, you might be able to bet on like a turnaround in this stock, but I wouldn't put too many eggs in that basket. So we've got, for the revenue growth uh, model, we have 3% revenue growth and a profit margin of 1%. So if they can just get up to 1% margins, that would help them out so much. And possibly getting up to 2%. I feel like this is a 
a good case scenario, but not maybe the best case. Uh, I think best case scenario, they make it to like three or four percent margins, but I don't think they'd ever go past three or four percent because of how competitive the industry is. Um, but assuming that they make it to two percent margins, then their fair share price is thirty five dollars. And after the debts, of course, it's negative because their debt is so high compared to their market cap. But anyway, that is my analysis of Walgreens. I would not put too too much money into the stock, um, but you could bet on a turnaround. Uh, it, I, I feel that it's highly risky. And so, yeah, leave any questions, comments, concerns in the comment section. Also, you can try this model for yourself. Check the link in the description. And hit that like button, and I'll see you in the next video.